Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I was very drawn to give this message and I'm actually doing this message a week later. What do you mean by that, Jane? So, um, grab yourself a water, uh, a cuppa. I always have um, water and lemon um, in mine and of course, charge with crystals. I wanna share a little bit because this is something that has touched uh, like thousands of people's lives. Uh, and it is in regards to my beautiful fur baby, Zach. So I'm going to try and keep it together because uh, it's a week today um, that he um, grew his angel wings. I was guided to actually share with everyone. So I'm doing this video for YouTube, for my social media, for my newsletter, etc., just to let everybody know what happened, what's going on, etc. Because as I said, Zach um, connected with so many people to do so, so much healing. You'll probably notice a now and an after photo of Zach. Now I do it the other way. And now meaning when he was alive, look at his big, beautiful, smiley face compared to when we got him. We get him? Right question. So in 2016, in August, I was away on holidays in Thailand. I had a week at Phuket and the second week at Koh Samui, and I was just so desperate for another dog. It's been 10 years since our previous dog, Lucky, had passed away. And she passed away from a tick-related paralysis. I did lots and lots of healing when she was in intensive care and managed to bring her back, but she chose to go on another journey. Um, and that was in 2017, uh, 2007, I should say. Some of you remember uh, Lucky Dog and she was part of the business as well. And so while I was in Thailand, every time I'd go for a walk, go early in the morning, my husband was asleep. There was two dogs that would greet me outside of the accommodation. They would escort me everywhere I'd go. I'd go through a jungle, they were right with me. Sometimes I'd walk walk, and they'd walk in front of me and stop me. Then I looked up and it was like, oh, can't go that way. There's a bit of a wild monkey or a wild bullock and they could have hurt me. Every morning for breakfast whilst I was at Kosamui, these two dogs, uh, a like ginger colored one and a black and white one, they would sit beside me as though they were my dogs. Now I didn't feed them, I didn't do anything. And I just went, it's time, it's totally time. So I said to my husband, do you know what? It's time to get another dog, it's been 10 years. And it was his choice not to have another dog um, for 10 years because it broke so many of our hearts and he didn't want to see people upset. I said, I've got to have a dog. These dogs are with me all the time. So flying back from Thailand to Brisbane, um, I said to my husband, what if we stop at the RSPCA, which is a place where animals are adopted or surrendered to this organization and then they find homes. And so he said, sure. So straight from the Brisbane International Airport, we went straight to the RSPCA and the suitcases were still on the, the car, etc. We hadn't even gone home yet to see our children. And uh, there was two dogs in a kennel and I went, okay, I think these are the two dogs because I was sure as to get two dogs. So we rang up our sons and said, come and meet us. And they said, yeah, we like the one at the back that's cowering and scared. Really? Okay, no problems. The one at the front, she had this big heart shape on her chest right here. And I, ah, oh, it has to be. Because the two dogs were together, I thought it was the two dogs. So we played with both Zach and this other dog. And then we came back a day later to play with the dogs again, because you take them in a pen. And my boys said, who were a teenager and an adult, said, yep, he's the one. Now, when I've got Zach, when we've got Zach, he was petrified of everything. And in fact, in this playpen, when instead of playing with the dog, he stood up on the chair next to me and he was not able to cuddle. He didn't know how to do anything. And I went, you know what? That's okay. And he was surrendered because he used to jump six foot fences. And I thought, okay, no problem. So it said I'm lovable and I just need a bit of training and I am a working dog. 
His breed is a New Zealand hunterway, and they're bred in New Zealand to round up cattle, climb mountains, stand up high, like on the chair, and round up the cattle, but work very smart dogs, very placid dogs. It wasn't until we had some plumbing work needing doing in the house, and the plumber said, what a New Zealand hunterway. I said, yes, how did you know? Oh, I've got one, they're the bestest dog. So I researched more about them and it was, yeah, so placid. The first night that Zach came, he didn't know how to come inside. He didn't know how to be patted. He didn't know how to cuddle. He didn't know how to eat properly. And in fact, his social skills and connection with anything was really quite what we call retarded, meaning just not connected at all. And so the journey began with beautiful Zach. I went, you know what? I've taken this dog on. It's about me stepping up. And that night, Zach turned to me. He'd slept outside, but inside he didn't know how to come in or out. We had beds and beanbags and everything ready for him. Um, he turned to me and he said, I told you I'd be back. What? What do you mean I'd be back? And it was my previous dog, Lucky. She had said to me while she was dying of the paralysis tick, she said, I will be back and you will teach medical intuition for animals. I went, no, 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 no. Anyway, I went to bed and it was now time for me to take beautiful Zach out for walks. He didn't know how to walk. He didn't know how to, as a boy, to cock his leg as he urinated. He just didn't know how to do it. And he was petrified of everything. A leaf would drop. Oh my gosh, the lapping water. Oh my gosh, like everything was just so full with fear. It broke my heart. And that's why I said, did you see the now and after, uh, before picture? Totally different face. So basic dog training happened sit, come, stay, and he topped it. It was amazing. The dog trainer loved him, everyone loved him. And in fact, everyone that met him just loved him because once he was able to get over his fears and connect, he was the most lovable boy ever, ever, ever. His favorite place was to go to the beach. Loved the beach. And in fact, he went to my favorite beach where I had an awakening. That awakening, was connecting to Atlantis, Lemuria, Pallades, etc. All the mystery school stuff like this that I teach. And that's where I used to take my previous dog, Lucky, to. But when I took him for the first time, it was like, this beach. Oh, okay, sure. And to see him come off the leash and just be free because it's an off-leash dog beach, um, which means he can run free. Oh, my gosh, he loved it. He was frightened of the water, but again, some gentle coaxing and training and connection and applying medical intuition, and he was able to go into the water. It was the most beautiful thing ever. So Zach loved that particular beach. At night time, what he would do very quickly and very early on was he would sit at this desk underneath, and especially winter time, I'd have my Ugg boots on and I'm working away at the computer, and he would curl around on my feet right here. And if not, he'd be scratching at the door of, come on, it's five o'clock, time for finish. Come on, time to sit on the couch with me and have a cuddle. He just knew the time. He knew the time of everything. He knew when people were coming on this vast, amazing, intuitive level. Uh, because he was such a working dog, it was a case of I needed to take him for extra training. So with that training, we did agility training. That's where, you know, running through tunnels and going under and over hoops and things. He topped it again. He was just so, so incredible. And you know what worked? It was because I did it all with love. No food treats. Oh my gosh, he was not good with food treats. He became gobble guts. Just with the love, I'd say, oh. I visualized where I wanted him to go, talked to him telepathically, and he did it, and he was right there. The dog trainer even said, how do you do that? And I said, well, I apply medical intuition, and he just tunes into it. And that's when he said, right, it's time. You need to release medical intuition, and I'm going to be on the front of it, and I'll be the mascot forever. And I said, sure. So suddenly I needed a photo. He said, take it now. Took the photo, 
plant. As you can see, here's the mascot from Animal Medical Intuition uh, starting in 2016, continuing now. It's the most beautiful thing that he has taught me. So with the agility training, you will have seen, he likes to climb on tree stumps, on slides or whatever, but all on plants. His favorite thing was crystal grids. Now, when he arrived, I gave him his own Merkaba, own 10 point Merkaba, which relates to, whoops, this particular um, code. And of course, you know, we give him his own crystals. He just loved it. And one particular time, see in the image, we'd done dog training and some things had been stirred up in him. So he lay down in my office and I put a grid all around him. He stayed there for an hour and a half out as though he'd been to another galaxy on back. He just tuned in to all of the crystal grids all of the time. And in fact, every time I used to make crystal grids for clients, um, like the Millennium Star, which was all about forgiveness, he would lie next to it and know where he needed to lie. Um, Atlantis grid, when I made an Atlantis grid, he said, I've got to lie in it. I've got to connect with it. My last grid that I made was recently, and it was an autumn grid. Autumn, according to this chart, is related to completion. It's time to complete something. Normally what he would do was he'd lie somewhere around the grid, maybe further out, closer in. This time I knew it was time. He actually kept stepping inside the grid. He was desperate to like jump inside the grid. It's time to complete. What I haven't told you is beautiful Zach was diagnosed with lymphoma whilst I was working in Greece in 2020-23. And when I tuned in, he said, please, no healing, no medication. You're just to ride this out. I don't want any. He knew that animal medical intuition would help him to recover and to heal the processes as it has done for so many other animals and humans that I've worked with. But he said, no. And so our beautiful boy um, just allowed the process and taught me so much. And with the autumn grid, as I said, it was time. It was just definitely time. And in that definite time, I had signs and symbols and everything come to me of, all right, it's time. One morning I woke up and his elbow had all swollen and the elbow is all about um, heartache. But the heartache was he needed to go. It was time to go. Whilst I was in working in Mexico um, a month before, I was in a sweat lodge called Temescal. And he'd come to me in a vision and I said, okay, I, I give you permission to go. He said, not yet. There's one more thing to do. And what was that? Well, whilst I was in Mexico, there was a large python that had come around the pool and he had it in his mouth and he was showing my husband. He was trying to teach my husband a lesson, an awakening process. What was it? Emotions. And so it was a big decision to actually say, okay, it's time for our beautiful boy who has touched so many people's lives. It's time for him to go. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned Zach just had this natural ability to be pure love. Once he'd learned to be from fear to love with animal medical intuition than I do, and he was on front covers of magazines all the time. He touched thousand people's lives, um, both in sessions, online, offline, on courses, um, through healing, through magazines, through uh, crystal grids and social media, everybody adored him. And in fact, on my social media, when I put it out that, uh, please, can we send prayers to our beautiful boy? There was like over 400 comments of prayers and insights. So I'm sharing with you, if you've been touched by Zach's life, thank you so, so much. Um, I needed to take the time off after the process and just grieve. And as I said, it's a week today. Today is the 19th of March, 2024. So if you're watching this now or in future and you've been touched by Zach, you know that um, I needed that space for grieving. However, Zach is still with us. Even yesterday, whilst I was teaching online, Zach's energy was right next to me here. And at night time, 
He's been walking around and I can hear the, his collar scratching. Please, thank you so, so much for allowing me to share about Zach. Um, thank you for allowing me to share that, yes, I am still grieving, but not as bad as I was last week. That was intense because it was a snap decision and that he will always be with us. And in fact, he said, I'm coming back as a girl. So Zach will return at some stage. For all of you that have got fur babies, enjoy every moment of them. Fur babies, bird babies, reptile babies, cricket babies, beetle babies, scarab beetle babies, whatever they are, enjoy them. And they're so precious, they're so innocent. And I just feel so blessed that Zach came into our life, even though it was a reincarnation of Lucky. When he came in as Zach, there was something so deep and profound in him. It was just extraordinary and how much he touched people's lives of healing. So from my heart to yours, thank you so, so much. Uh, and let's see the best of the best in every single animal, um, no matter where we are. And I have made it my policy that whenever I travel in the world now, as I have done from uh, January in 2023, Egypt, Greece in August 2023, Egypt again 2023, Mexico in 2024, that every time I go overseas that any animal comes to me, I'm going to offer medical intuition, healing and love and they've been swamping me. So why don't you offer some love to the animals because they're there to offer love to you. So thank you so much, Super Souls. So much love from my heart to you. And Zach, we remember you. We'll always remember you. Lots of love, everyone. And thank you so much, Zach. We love you.